better than anyone else. He was like, you can't remember what you did? No one else will ever remember. So, too many choices, too, too much complication, and too much process. It's bad. You're working on a big team? You've got too many choices? Every one of the choices you make, there's gotta be art for that. There has to be tech for that. It just may be like a little, oh, it's just an extra gun. That's nothing. I'll just change number here and here, and we'll be fine. No, that's eight hours of hard time. That's 16 hours of programmer's time. You just lose the scope of your project. Once is fine. How about 100 times? 1,000 times? It's the little itty bitty. It's like, oh, there's two extra points. It'll be fun. No, you've now just tapped on 20% extra overhead to your game. That's not cool. Be smart about where your choices are and make sure that they're important before you put them in. Who else wants to know? Meeting with choices. Bad, 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 bad. Don't do it. That's pokey. And he's going to talk very fast later than we do on his slides. Pokey is the designer. That means he's in charge of this game. It's his vision. It's his game. It's his design. Who's important? Him. You know what? Then you decide to do me. Because it's his game. Someone's in it. Maybe it's your team. Maybe it's a player. Maybe this thing's too hard. He doesn't like that feedback because he's the designer. It reflects his vision perfectly. People like this. This is it. This is a total problem in the industry. It's their feedback. Yeah, seriously. They're your customers. They're paying you to make this. Please, 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 please don't make it. I've seen too many times with developers being like, beta test, player feedback, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, who is this guy anyway? It's just, it's just like opened up the beta test a bunch of dudes off the streets. What the hell do they know about playing games? What the hell, what the hell do they know about designing games? A lot more than they give you credit for. They're your customers. Who is buying this game in the end? The players, the customers. If they don't like it, they're not purchasing your stuff. It doesn't matter if you think it's the best thing ever. You're not buying your game. They are. Their feedback is important. Now, and then a lot of people are like, oh, oh no, they left me horrible feedback. They hate my name. They hate me. I'm just like enraged with the industry, not naming any names. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes people are, um, they can be trolls. They can be really mean on the internet. It happens. But they are actually taking the time to troll you and not troll someone else. You know what that means? They actually do like something about your game because it pissed them off that much that they took the time and effort to come troll you and not someone else. If they really, really are like, eh, or didn't like it, or bored, most people are not going to take the time out of their schedule to come bother you about it. So the fact that they're doing that, at least read it, read through it, and get the desk right, you know, check it out with it, but, yeah. um, So a lot of times people put in their bugs. Yes, they don't necessarily know the system that well. They are, you know, the beta player, the alpha tester, and they may take a guess, they usually do, at why it's broken, or why it sucks, or why it's wrong. And more often than not, it could be not quite right, but, don't just look at what's actually written in the bugs and what people tell you, like your game was boring, your game was unbalanced. Like, okay, I think my game's unbalanced. I'm sorry, you had a bad time. Try to get more information from that. Why was it unbalanced? Why did you have a bad time? Look through, like, between the lines of people's feedback and let to see what the underlying cause was. Because while they don't necessarily know the entire system, you do, and you can have a better chance of finding what the real problem is and fixing it if you just took five extra minutes on that bug report. You're like, oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe this weird, like, you know, side path that I didn't really pay much attention to is actually not important and could have some serious flaws in it. I just never noticed. And if they would have said, oh, it's because you're lighting, it's like, oh no, I see it, so my graphics are working. Mm -hmm. But if you had a board, it would have never been. Yes, cause this. I can't read my slides. Alright, so don't ignore player feedback. It's bad. It's bad, 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 bad. Bad. <laughs> I've heard this so many times in just like the past year. It's ridiculous. When games are too easy. When the casuals have ruined hardcore gaming. When games were tough when I was a kid. You died 3,000 times and you liked it. You went to the arcade and you lost quarter after quarter after quarter. And that's how games were played. These stupid kids don't know how good they had it. I'm like, what? Are you serious? People are like, there are designers out there who make it their point to make players lose. That is their goal in life, because players have it too easy. Like, what? What are we here for? We're making the game. We're making the game last time both, right? Right? You've got to be kidding me. Seriously, the player is not your enemy. <laughs> the player is not your enemy. 
You're the game designer. You're making a form of entertainment. You're making fun. You are not there to outsmart your player and prove how clever you are. Seriously, this is not what you're supposed to do. That's great if you're really intelligent and clever. I don't care how clever you are. You want your player to feel clever. That's what you're doing. When you're designing experiences, you're designing these puzzles, I don't give a crap how clever you are. If you make the most inane, like, you know, text-based adventure thing, you're like, and you have to attach a mop to a broom handle to get a bee to get some honey over here and build a giant blue golem machine, that's not clever. That's asinine. No one is going to follow that thought pattern and be like, yeah, I came up with that too. It was such a good puzzle. And people would be like, what the fuck was this designer thinking? There's no way I would have come up with that. And they just get angry. So yeah, good job. You outsmarted the player. Well done. What was the point of that? You want the player to actually sit through it and be like, oh yeah, I know how to solve this. I've got a great idea. Maybe I should do it this way instead. Yeah, it totally works. And then your player feels awesome about themselves and they like your game. Make them feel clever, not you. And another way this is exhibited is when the computer is having the fun and not the player. This also happens a lot, especially in like simulation of strategy games where you've got these really, really complicated algorithms running in the background. Um, this happens a lot of Praxis, actually, where you want to simulate all these kind of like, army dudes moving, and they have like, oh, what if they're on the terrain here? The road would give them a plus two movement, but if they go over to this hill, it would be a minus one. And then if there's a archer on the hill, they get this other negative bonus here. And so you've got this huge system, and when you watch like press play and watch it go, you're like, I'm a genius. This is the most beautiful system ever. And then if you're the player, you're like, I didn't do anything. I just moved this guy here to here, and they died, and I don't know why. That sucks. And you're like, oh. Yeah, I guess from your perspective, it did kind of suck. You didn't see the beautiful magic happening in the background. Make sure your player is the one having the fun and not the computer. Please. Please, please, please. Also, don't, please, please, please don't smooth the player into one correct little hallway design choice. Which is the choice of the hallway by the Francis 13. Like so all the <laughs> Players like to feel clever. They like to explore. They like to try to poke at your simulation to see if this will break. Can I do this? Can I do this? Let them. That's part of the fun of gaming. It's exploring. It's not just exploring the world. It's exploring the system, the simulation you created that they are interacting with. That's half the fun. Let them do that. Don't. I see this. You know. Well, the player did that wrong. What do you mean they did that wrong? Well, he beat him wrong. Well, he did the boss, didn't he? I thought that was the goal of this whole like little dungeon was you wanted to kill the boss. Yeah, but he did it wrong. My mind does not compute that statement. Like, what do you mean he did it wrong? He didn't do it the way you planned. I'm sorry. He dropped the bullet over the boss's head and killed him that way. That's clever. That's exploration. That's emergent gameplay. Let that happen. Let players find new ways to solve problems you didn't think of. That's not a bug. That's emergent. That's good. Yay. And it's easier to do that when you design simple systems. Don't make your systems overly complicated, because when you do that, that's when you have one that'll only really work if all these like X, Y, D, C conditions are correct, and that otherwise entirely falls apart and die. Keep it simple, but build depth on it. That's what allows exploration. Simple to learn, depth to master. Don't hate the player. Don't treat him like an idiot. Don't try to outsmart him. That's not the point. You're trying to be the player at good times. And all the same thing are hard work and cattle. So is Ryan Ryan. Ryan Ryan makes Ryan makes my game longer. I'm cheap. I don't have a lot of resources. I don't want my players to finish my game in six hours. That's crap. I would have bought it to 40 by making them grind through a thousand levels that are all the same but are different colors. Because you know. There's the other idea that if it's too easy to get something, you know, no one's going to respect it, they won't care about it, because it will just hand it to the most little platter. If they didn't work for it, if they didn't like, shed blood and tears of anguish, they won't care about it. And my personal favorite in the MMO is it's more realistic if I make them work for it by like walking between the goddamn cities. No, 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 no. Because flying is, players can't fly. They can't teleport. Can you teleport? I can't teleport. I don't teleport to my office. God, I'd love to, but that doesn't happen. You can walk there. And that's realistic. It builds immersion. Your player is your customer. <laughs> the one thing they have that you are trying to buy for is time. Everyone is buying for players' time. Especially more people. You don't have the money up front. You're buying for other companies, other people, other products. If you get to play.
volunteers time, you have a greater chance of getting their money. What you are asked. Respect the players' time. Don't waste it on stupid stuff that has nothing to do with your core gameplay, like walking between cities. Is that what your core game is about? Are you flopping? That's fine then. Make them walk between the cities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pulling out the old records now. <laughs>
players who have never won the business league. But you know, he took those into business, he shoots money out to what type of game. Fine. They wrote a 45 minute tutorial on putting goods in business and having money shoot out of business. Like, you're like, are you serious? And you couldn't skip it. Like, this is the same business league as every other video game. This is not, this is not good. This is not, you know, innovative in any way whatsoever. Why is there no let's get one? I understand. Show them once, let them try it, and have the game, you know, do the regular system where the game keeps track. If they're trying to put on random stuff and nothing's happening, have it pop up the tutorial again. Or like, did you want some extra help? Make the game respond to the player and not just assume that they're all the slime and dredge of humanity that can't hit anything in their head. Don't assume your player is retarded. Please, please, please. But at the same time, One of the reasons I actually reached with my friends their team was that they had this like um, learning course for boss battles. It had nothing really to do with the main point of the game. just ridiculous and exercises that you had to fight to progress the game. You couldn't go around and you had to just physically beat you out of these things to perform. And there was no way out of it. And most of these bosses had some kind of random um, damage thing and like random timer that you had X amount of turns ish to beat them, but that was randomized, so sometimes it was 10, sometimes it was 15, sometimes it was 20, and it didn't matter if you used the same strategy, and looked at the walkthrough and it said use this strategy, and you try it 10 times, sometimes it just wouldn't work because it was random, and you got it by its value, and that's crap. And the game didn't care. Like, I played about one of those battles for 30 times, and you couldn't get past it. I gave up, like, I don't this game is not doing that much to me. That is annoying. The game that's so much you would like, there's a problem. There's a problem here. There's a choke point that no one can get past unless especially if it's built around random, that's ridiculous. Do not ever build choke points that involve random seat numbers. It sounds like a neat idea that everyone's battle will be slightly different and be cool. No, that's not cool, that's annoying. That, and you can't test that. You can't test anything involving random efficiently. Your test is lost. Hey, Chief. Seriously. <laughs> I have people who use the test otherwise this is okay. You don't want to do that. Thank you. 
You've got one where the player is playing against an AI, it's playing against a system, it's playing against a computer that is only as good as the instructions that it was given. The other you're playing a living human being, you can think and do things and learn, especially learn from these failures and from these mistakes. You can't do that. Dr. Matt would make Why would you balance systems the same way for a computer versus a person? It makes no sense when you really sit down and think about what people do. Because combat's one of the biggest ones. Well, it's just combat. It's you hit with stick, he hit with club, damage happens, it's all the same, it doesn't matter. You, it's completely, completely different. When you've got a player fighting a computer, right, they know it's fake. You're not fooling anyone. There's a little computer program inside and you're like, I shall screw the player over next by using this skill instead of this one. Yeah, it's be magical. No, it's just one. There's just a little if else statement that changes following you, this game. Like, oh, you're healthy, you're young. That's all it is. And players are dumb. And if you just having like a world for a whole level goes without rewarding them with anything, before. When you kill a real person, it doesn't matter how like cracking battle is, you just took someone out. It's a real person. That automatically is reward enough in a lot of ways because you just totally pwned that guy. Whereas with owning a computer, it's like, good job, you beat some zeros and ones. I'm so proud of you. You have to like ramp the difficulty more, make the game completely unbalanced, usually in the computer's favor, and have them cheat. Having a computer cheat is actually a very, very popular method of uh, balancing for single player games because otherwise the computer will lose every single time because it can't think, it can't learn, it cannot react to what you're doing. So just make it 300 times as far from the end and now it stands a chance. And because of that, give the player better rewards. Yes, computers are actively cheating. Let them have some really awesome shit. That makes it feel like that battle is now worth a while. And like, yeah, that was awesome. Player, you can do that. Totally so, eh, we just got five players on his own. That guy is going to be like, Shit talking in the forums for like a month now. Be like, yeah, I'm so awesome. I'm so awesome. Did I get let mad from that? No, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pull you. Yay! Go back to the balance. It's bad. Go do it. So now, come back a little bit from the player. I'm going to talk about respecting the game as a medium. The game is an art form. The game is a piece of interactive entertainment. Games aren't movies. They're not books. They're not music theater. They're not stage play. They're not music. They're not stories, they're not narratives, they're games. They're interactive. Mr. Pope is that he plays a lot of RPGs. He loves cutscenes, he thinks they're awesome. Cutscenes are the best way to tell a story, right? They're a great reward for players who've been playing the game a lot. Because they're pretty. People like pretty games. We already know that pretty games sell all the graphics. So hell, we'll make lots of cutscenes. Because that's totally the point. And the marketers love it because when they can put on the back of the box, have 60 hours of pre rendered cinematic movies, they're like, no, 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 that's not good. It's not good at all. Yeah, that was actually a natural problem. Games are interactive, movies are passive. Movies, you sit on your butt and you're watching, you have no control over. Games, you are controlling everything that's happening in the game. They are interactive, movies are passive, narratives are passive, stories are passive. Use this in the music to pass. Every other form of your game I can think of off the top of my head Yes, it's easy to get bogged down by like, but if I give them a choice point here, or if I let them touch the controls at this point, they may move the camera over here. My beautiful cutscene with like, you know, I had this plan where this character was here, this character here, this shooting star. They'll miss it because they're staring at the tree over there. Do that. The player wanted to stare at the tree. Why are you, why are you saying that that's wrong? I want to stare at the tree. Who cares? Is it your game or is it the player's game? Who's playing the game? It's always the player. Who do you want? Any, I'm not, and you know, cutscenes aren't always the whole thing you can find. Anytime, like a director or an artist or a designer says, I want a cutscene here, always, always just take a step back and be like, why? Why do I need a cutscene here? What's the point? Is it a whole player reward? Which it can be. I mean, after a really, really, really hard um, sequence of events, sometimes having a nice little piece of eye candy is worth it. That is a nice little piece of reward. If it's like five seconds and doesn't happen every single hour, yeah, that's fine. Is it a massive story point? Sometimes if you want to tell a story, it is. It's just something that you're going to say. It happens. Um, is it something that you want to show the game and just actually something that you're capable of handling? That definitely happens. Um, especially with big story points. The art director has this hype, has this heart set up, he wants this huge ass fireworks explosion, extravaganza, with the reflecting off the water, and you're like, yeah, our, our uh, game is just like, doing it with like, Very, very hard sequence of events that the players are going to control for an hour or a break. Let the 
First Amendment freedom of access rights, and it could be limited to the 30 second bus fee, they can put the control down, and they can go back. And then you can just start right back up again. But give them that little bit of breather. Ooh, it's really worth it. And again, it's all comes back to respecting player time, the number one asset of your player that you are buying for. How long is your cutscene? If it's like 10 seconds, that sounds like not enough. That sounds like a short enough time. 10 seconds is really, really long. You sit there and you like count. And you're like, oh god. Alright, 10 seconds over. Go watch a commercial. And how many of those are like 40 seconds, 30 seconds, and it feels like they're goddamn forever? Yeah, it doesn't sound like a lot of time because you're bored out of your mind. 10 seconds is a long time. A minute is unthinkable. Unthinkable. You always be very cognizant of how long you are wasting the how often do they appear? If they're like once every 10 hours, that's fine. You're not wasting any time. If they're once every hour, that's what it is. Um, I think with Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid was like a 45-minute introduction movie. It was unbelievable. And I can't believe it. I would continue to play the game after that. I would probably play it when I was asleep. Why do you play? Their story is very important. Also, I asked my players to play and you will piss off every single artist in the room that you're bringing that suggestion out because you just said that all their work and all their hard effort is meeting their suggestions. Which, yes, it is what But it's an interactive game. It's a game. If people want to skip it, let them skip it. Especially if it's like right before a battle and like a boss fight. Holy God, let them skip it. Seriously. I don't know. This is happened to me. You know what Where you're like, I'm going to go fight the boss. Like, oh, this is a nice little thing where they like you know, do a camera pan of the boss. Like, yeah, it looks so cool. And then you lose boss battle, and you lose the boss battle a second, a fifth, a tenth time, and you can't ever skip that cutscene. No. Controllers are rolled, things are broken. Don't do it. A game is not a movie. Do not treat games like movies. Right. Games aren't movies. Story is fine. Story can have a place in games. A lot of games do have narratives. And that's all. I'm unbelievable with kids. There are a lot, I mean, hell, there are positions called narrative designers. It's a thing. Like, your job is to write story and characters for games. This is a, it's a position. It's not like, you know, that, oh, just this one company, just buy it. No, the stories are important in a lot of games. And stories can, a lot of games, stories like some wire ones can have new ones who can story They can have all these epic plot They can have all these characters. But stories are passive. The more pre-planning you do in your story, the more choice you just took away from your player. Yep. That's what you're picture of all time. After all time. If your story has arcs and plot points and a definitive ending, you have just removed all aspects of player choice that involve the direction of the game. That's bad. That is super bad. And it doesn't matter. Even you know, they're like, oh, there'll be a dialogue choice. They can choose they want to support this or this. So it's helping like, no. What did that choice actually accomplish? Nothing. It changed nothing about the game. Did it change the ending? Did it change what the, um, the next event was? Did it change something like either, you know, like if there's uh, dark or light side? Did these have a physical tangible effect on like, their skills? No, it did nothing. That's not choice. It's nothing. So when your game, if you decide that story, it kind of comes back to like, you know, who's the customer, the player, who's telling the story? It's not you, it's the player. It's the player, sir. The player is the main character. It's not you, it's not your character. Even if you have like a main character. I mean, that's why, like in Halo, in the first one, did you ever see Master Chief's head? Did you ever see his face? No, you. The story was about you. You were Master Chief. If they showed you more about that character, it became about Master Chief. It didn't, it wasn't about you anymore. That was a very cognizant decision. That team made, they knew what they were doing. Always, always, always make sure the player is the main character of the story. Of your game. And that's something that's actually sometimes hard to get across to like writers who come in as the designers and just like they're not going to do that, they love novels, they're really, really good at crafting stories. And like, oh I'll just move to the game, and I'll write stories there. And they have a lot of problems with understanding that you know, the story isn't about you. It's not about your ability to craft a narrative. It's not about your ability to tell a compelling uh, storyline. It's about the player. It's about giving them a meaningful storyline to experience, to control, to direct, to be a part of. This is a theater where they're watching the stage performers. They are the stage performers. Let them interact with the system. Don't make them stand on the outside 
and just like kind of watch everything happening. Let them change things, let them be there. Do not ever let Derek Trump change life, regardless of who ever tells you. Never, ever, ever. Oh, yeah. Woo! No. Why are you drinking? Ah. All right. This is a collection of algorithms I wrote. Um, this is from City 2. I'm sure this is a little not this is a We have, so City 2, instead of just buying blocks of the same size of land like the City 1, we had different shaped districts in the pond instead of like blocks. And rather than having to plot a land, cost the same amount, rather than, wouldn't it be nice if it was based on how big it was? So therefore, smaller blocks of land cost less. And it would cost more. So player than it choose. Like, well, how much money do I want to spend? Do I want to go for the big one? Or I just want to like, buy a lot of little ones in my mansion. I'm going to that one. We're like, okay, that sounds reasonable. That's the move. Well, we also want to put an item cost in there because this is the PM. So they want me to sell the things. So each district had associated like expansion plans, I think, over a little bit. Items that you could purchase for money or like grind the shit out to collect purchase. And we're like, well, we don't want a planner just like, you know, buying up all the real estate at once just because they're fair. We want to try to control the experience a little bit more and control the progression. And we have story districts popping around the map that were once you unlock, you unlock new things to see, you unlock new quests, new buildings. And we didn't want players just beelining for the story districts. We wanted them expanding their city in a more natural like kind of way that it's really expands. So we're like, all right. Well, then there should also be a kind of population requirement because you're seeing some population. So if you don't have a lot of people, you're not going to be buying up all the land surrounding your city. You're going to wait to have you know, need to expand. So you find a population requirement. And this is the monstrosity that um, fills up those discussions. Um, the programmers literally refused to program this. They're like, no, here's the empty glass. If you're touching this, you're all doing this. You're controlling this. If there's a problem, if it's broken, it's not our problem, it's your problem.
a big problem for a lot of solar panels. These things are really expensive. That, you know, you've got your game, and to make extra money, to extend the life of the product, people will lose, people will see. To go along with it, especially if they like the holidays. Like, oh, I've got this game, it's cool, but Christmas is rolling around. Wouldn't it be awesome if players could purchase an expansion set? And then that introduces all of a sudden holiday Christmas time, because everyone loves holidays, everyone celebrates holidays, everyone celebrates the same holidays, because we're narrow minded and we don't talk to our players, and so we just assume they have the same Christian, like, you know, cultural norm, like, the loose that everyone else is going to be. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> We had so many people rage quit Passable. I, I can't even, I'm actually not allowed to say that, but it was a lot. It was a lot of people. So Passable was a game that was a Dallas game. Um, it was pretty cute. It was actually mostly um, little ensembles to you guys got bought by Zig Lights. So they made, they had to make a build game, but they had a lot of nice little like, death and strategy hidden in the game that they kind of showed you nothing else. And they got like, hmm, you can do it. And it was kind of fantasy based. They were the ones who first introduced crafting really into like the Zigga game. It was all about something. It came out in early November. And so then you have this little kind of things with most social games and there's a little bit of a thing called content games where they release new content on a regular basis. Every two weeks, every four weeks, even if you see this like long back in the middle wars, every Tuesday of the first Tuesday of the month, there's new content that they're kids. Why on God's green planet would you release shit DLC after you spent three years working on a game that you like? Sweated over, loved, worked on to make it as perfect as possible, and then you're just like, here, have this crappy Santa Claus outfit, because that's totally the worst their game. Why would you do that? It makes no sense. But it's like taking your car that you just spent $60,000 on and slapping a $2 bumper sticker on the back and then smearing it across so like the sticker tape is everywhere. And you're like, yeah, ruined investment. It's the same thing. Why would you do that? And that happened in Castleville. Castleville came out in November. Christmas was around the corner. The Neil Society they needed a Christmas content. Like update. No, it didn't. It was fantasy themed. It didn't really have a lot of tech. Like, you know, I think maybe they had a steampunk reference or two, but it was definitely like medieval fantasy. And, you know, they had some NPCs that were, they had a ranger, they had like a princess, they had a wizard. It was fantasy. Christmas rolls around and it's rocking Santa Claus, literally. White beard, red hat, reindeer, he has a sleigh that crashes into the ground. You're like, are you serious? You made a fantasy game and you just threw Santa Claus in and here's some candy canes and some crap. Like, so many people. So many people with, including the um, chief game designer, that was me. Oh, done. Sorry, guys. Why would you do that? It has nothing to do with the game. It, a lot of people do it. It's not just, like, I don't want to just, like, you know, shit on Zynga. A lot of companies do it because people like Christmas. People spend money on Christmas. It's the holidays. Yeah, all well, the people not only really players are Christian either. Not all of them celebrate Christmas. And Zynga does not belong in advance. Anytime you're doing expansions, DLC, anytime you're expanding your product, always look at what's going in. Does it support your core systems? Is it adding to them in any kind of value? Is it just making it more complicated? Um, does it go with your games in like, you know, a world theme? Is it completely tacked on like what? That makes no sense. Is it offensive? Um, I'm not giving to make sure that every single piece of content goes in is the most piece of crap ever. No, I would. If your goal is to get as many downloads as possible, make sure it's applicable to as many people as possible. Or just this one tiny little, like, oh, yeah, 2,000 people will download this. Well, yeah, that makes sense. And really, why did you do it? There, I know people who are so like this. Hell, I did it right when we knew the game was closing. I really, really wanted a Cajun character in Citadel, because I'm Cajun, I'm from Louisiana, I've always come on the representative games. Where's my crazy Bayou, like, you know, hillbilly person? I saw the Cajun character, it made zero sense. But the game is perfect, whatever. But yeah, should I have done that? No. No, 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 no. But pretty much all the other characters really know. They had, there were political satire characters. There was a guy who was basically a from me. They had a, they had a, they had a, they had a, so they all were based on political satire, and then I threw the Cajun character. Yeah. Anything else happened to me that is not good. It may give you more money in the like, short term, but it destroys your products. It destroys all the work that you put in, it destroys all the work your team put in. Why would you do that? Just do it. There is also this, you know, it's good to have a strong community in place, for example. Um, if you want your name to last, 
if you want the game to be played for longer than a month, you have to have a strong season back in the day. If your friends are still playing, if you know all night you're playing, you will keep playing. No one you know is playing the game, the odds of you quitting are resting much, much higher. They actually had evidence for this season in numbers. I don't have them on here, unfortunately, but it was just insane how important the community was. And the easy thing that people did to build the community was, we'll put a contest in. What drums up, you know, interest, like, contest, because people can win stuff. It'll be awesome. That is what it's too busy for us to do. Your gimmicks and require moderation, which so many people forget. So, so, so many people forget. You just don't like, like oh yeah, you know, we'll just judge. Uh, put up a picture of your farm and we'll pick the top 10, and you guys will win, like, you know, 60 farm cash. Someone has to go through all the, um, all the entries. Someone has to go through them to clear out all the penis jokes, because people do that with their hay bales, and they're like, yeah, good job. <laughs> Someone has to sit there, and like when people can't submit to the contest, it broke, it pulled that me, and it used up my one time to submit. And now you need tech support and all that. Contests are not free. Never, ever, ever are they free. Just be like, oh yeah, we'll just pay for the reward, and that's it. No, there are so many personnel costs that go into running these little side things for community. Don't forget that. You can't solve community issues with contests. If people are angry and they're leaving your game, helping the contest will not fix that. You can't solve balance issues. Like, oh, we'll just ask them, we'll put in a poll. And whoever says, like, you know, the community goes, it'll be this way, it's going to work this way or this way. No, because everyone who said the other way is going to be super pissed off and be like, oh, it's broken now, beyond me. What did you listen to them? They must have, like, you know, had insiders or something. No, it just makes anger in the community. You can't improve your metrics in the contest. That's ridiculous. I think nobody believes this. Thank you. 